We are here with Chris O'Dowd, the star, one of the stars, and wow. John Michael McDonough, the writer-director right. of a really fascinating film that premiered last night called Calvary, which, I mean, I want to say, I think it has cornered the market in kind of poetic, tragic comedies about Catholicism and murder. And yeah, there's not too many. No, but I mean... I, <laughs> We're I, I number one. I don't think know. anyone should make another now. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a hard act to That's top. It. That's the end of that genre. <laughs> <laughs> Disney are going to put the one back in the drawer. <laughs> I mean, how, how would you... Imagine if you were pitching that film to, to anyone, how would you actually describe it? I'd describe uh, in a... Uh, kind of cinephile way I described it as Robert Bresson's Diary of a Country Priest but with lots of gags. That yeah I mean it needed more gags I think. <laughs> <laughs> You've sort of improved on it there. Um, <laughs> but it's it's also it's a really interesting film because it's you don't see a lot of movies that take on matters of faith very directly and very sincerely and yet have the guts to kind of do comedy within that. Yeah I mean you mentioned Bresson you know Bergman was doing all that kind yeah. of thing in the 60s it's kind of gone out of fashion to try to have a real mature sort of conversation. I'm not saying I'm wholly having a mature conversation because I always want to leaven, leaven stuff with humour because um, I think things become too didactic. You know? yeah. I mean, I like Bergman's films, but not a lot of laughs sure. in, in those films. No. Uh, but yeah, so it was just, you know, I wanted to do try something different after the, get, after the guard, a, a progression. Yeah, know? I mean, it feels it's in the same kind of spirit and same slightly heightened community, but... Yeah, but just taking on darker material. Yeah, there's this similar kind of, you know, idiosyncratic characters who are uh, manoeuvring around the, the one, our one central character played by Brendan. Yeah, yeah. It's similar in that way. And Chris, I know when I interviewed you, like, you last year, you mentioned that you had this coming up, and you said it's difficult to talk about what I'm playing in it, and it's still difficult to talk about that. Yeah. But what, what drew you to this material? Well, kind of like what you were talking about just there. I mean, it feels like a very mature conversation about where religion is to us individually. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of am fascinated by that. I grew up, I suppose, in a, in a small town, something like is in Calvary. Um, and if everybody went to mass and nobody really knew why. Mm -hmm. And I think having that conversation is, is, is interesting. I think that the that John deals with that very well. I remember when he talked about doing a film about a priest, I was kind of instantly not that interested because I presumed it would be a hatchet piece. Yeah. And, uh, and then when I found out that his kind of film was the same as mine, which is I had a really good relationship with priests and tackling a, um, problems with faith via the eyes of a good priest was kind of fascinating. Yeah. So I was drawn into that. And, I mean, did the, did the script make you laugh up front, or were you Yeah, I thought it was very yeah. witty. And, you know, there was some, obviously some genuinely, you know, funny one-liners, and all of the characters are so... They're very idiosyncratic, and they're very um, almost extraordinary, but totally believable, which is a hard one to pull yeah. off. And, John, were you nervous about taking on this kind of material in Ireland, where it's still such a sort of hot-button topic, especially with the recent... You know, Catholic Church. Sort uh, of I can't say I was nervous about yeah. doing it, but I'll be interested to see what the reaction is going to be once it screens in Ireland. You know. Yeah, I, c I could go either way. I'm not sure. What's the reaction been like <coughs> here so far? It's been overwhelmingly positive. Yeah, some, like really fantastic reviews. And they, my intentions for the film um, have kind of been met by their critical response. Yeah, so it feels like people got the movie that I'll, I'll try to make. How long has the idea kind of been generating for you? Where, where was uh, the spot Just for it? in the post-production of the guards, only for a you know, yeah. couple of years or whatever. Um, the script, I don't like to rewrite too much. I think I probably shot maybe a third draft or something. Yeah. I like to write in a burst and then do you know, a few revisions and then that's it. Um, I don't like to overthink too much. And Chris, I know you're a writer as well. Um, and in some of your other films, you've often kind of improved a bit and and so riffed on the material. Was there any room for that here, or did you really sort of play it as written? Well, I don't know if there was room for it, but there wasn't really any need for it. Yeah. So, um, like, I like doing improv, but I prefer not doing improv. You know, I prefer when the script is so tight and funny that it doesn't necessitate anything um, yeah. other than just trying to do it well. So I can't remember. I don't think we did, really. There might have been, no, a, there might have been a few lines you played yeah. around with, but I don't think it was too no, much. Really. It was very strong. Of course, Ali, not at Sundance 
with us today is Brendan Gleeson, yeah. who's of course the lead of the film and is fantastic in it. Um, and of course you already had a relationship with him from The Guard. And Chris, your character in particular has a, you know, all your scenes really involve him. Yeah. What was it like to work with him? I mean, he's a, he's a colossus, you yeah. know, he's very focused, but um, he has that gorgeous thing that a lot of really good actors do where he's only a very short, sh short burst away from, from, from laughing, mm. which I always kind of like in a person. Like he can be very straight and very full on, but very teasable and tickleable as well. Mm. He really likes to talk through the psychology of scenes, you know, yeah. the, what the character, what, the, what each character is thinking, and that kind of thing. He's very prepared in that way, and he's kind of almost a method actor, I yeah. find. Or from what I've read about method actors, he seems to have that kind of an approach, anyway. It's an amazing performance he gives, really. Yeah, you know, it really just, is. you know, you hear about actors leading a film. I, I know, I don't know if I've seen it as much so. Like, this is like. Lincoln or something. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. he really is in nearly every frame. Yeah, it's real towering sort of performance. Do you see yourself always kind of making films with a very sort of Irish setting and theme? Because I mean, The Guard was kind of quintessentially Irish as uh, well. No, no, I mean, the next, the next couple of scripts I've got, I want to make an American movie if I can. But of yeah. course, The Guard is a success. If Calvary is a success, you know, I can, I guess, write my own ticket if I want to make another Irish film. Yeah. So, so there is that to to think about as well in the world I get you know the films the kind of films I want to make don't get financed that often particularly yeah. not in America and it may be you know that I, I have to you know delve into those sort of troubled waters and yeah we'll, but we'll see how it goes and because both the guard and Calvary are sort of very much genre hybrid pieces I mean yeah. could you see yourself ever making just a straight out sort of gung-ho thriller I'd love to yeah um thrillers I find are the most underrated they're the toughest to write you know, I've never been sent a good thriller from anybody, and they're underrated by people. People seem to think, you know, dramas, are, you know, people in front rooms having up loud arguments is tough to write. That's the easiest thing to write. To write a well-plotted thriller is the toughest. I'd love to do one of those. I, don't, um, I was saying earlier, I, I don't think I'd ever do anything that was just without humour in it. I would always look for humour somewhere, you know, yeah. so it would always have that element. I think if you cut that out of a story, you're cutting out a big part of the humanity, really. And Chris, we know you primarily as a comedian, and this is very much the kind of darkest thing you've played, even though there's a kind of gallows humour to it. Sure. Could you ever see yourself moving into a kind of straight-up drama? Yeah, maybe if it's good, you know. Uh, Girls had that kind of dark element to yeah. it, yeah. didn't it, as well? Yeah, and I did a thing called Crimson Petal in the Water. You know, it always, I, I, I often wonder if like, dramatic actors asked if they're going to do any comedy soon. But uh, yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there, there is some kind of a thing about um, Holly, Molly, Molly Shannon knows what I'm talking about. There's some yeah. weird thing where a comedic actor, for some reason, isn't taken as seriously, even though it's a lot harder. The best actors I've ever worked with are, are really good at being funny. Yeah, there is that sort of assumption. If you're doing comedy, it's a sort of a lesser approach yeah. to acting than when you're doing drama, as if you're going to be more prepared when you do drama than you do comedy. And, basically all about timing. Good actors yeah. have great timing, you know. Um, I think there's a lot of great actors who actually can't, couldn't do the comedy. You yeah. know. Which is why a film like Calvary sort of shows just how kind of complex and how much comedy can actually bear thematically. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. But I mean, I'm, I'm going to do the, we're going to do the next Rugrats movie. <laughs> we're really excited about. Or we could do the Disney remake of the this, of this the film. Yes. The Disney musical <laughs> remake. Calvary, <laughs> just with an exclamation mark at the end. <laughs> What's, what's next for both of you then? What are you kind of, have you got anything you're working on right uh, now? Yeah, I've got, so I've got these two, two American scripts. Um, one's based on a novel. Uh, that, is, that is kind of a noir. Yeah. And then another one about, I've been working on for a few years about two, uh, two corrupt cops in, the, in um, Texas. Uh, that would be a kind of, you know, a black comedy, a sort of freebie in the bean. But again, it gets darker and darker as it goes along. You know? So there's always that kind of element to it. I'm about to start to play on Broadway. We're doing Of Mice and Men. Uh, so we start in the middle of March tomorrow. Is it a comic take on Of Mice and Men? Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> it depends how well I remember it's my lines. It's pretty hilarious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he doesn't kill him in the end. They just, they just kiss. <laughs> 
It's a homoerotic <laughs> of mice and men. Yeah, me and Franco, we just, <laughs> just fuck our way through it. That's going to be hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd pay, I'd like the theatre, but yeah. I'd pay to see that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you can make the movie of it. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. For breaking entertainment news and more, follow at HitVix on Twitter or visit HitVix.com.